17, 18 years, and I, <laughs> I've come by this gallery so many times. <sighs> <laughs> no, don't start. Sunday afternoons on my bicycle. <clears throat> Ah. We'll go through this. Yeah. Richard Tiberio in Time and Space. Oh, Agassi. J. J. Alidio. M. Albright. Arachilia. T. Aldibi. R. P. L. N. M. Amiat. J. Anderson. C. Andre, R. Andro, R. Amerian, M. Artrium, C. Artega, B. Ash, C. Arich, L. Bodenhausen, L. Bakinian, A. Bailey, C. Bangs. I could have taken up the first 10 minutes of my presentation just reading the names of the artists from the Sideso Nation's potlatches. Yeah. The next five minutes would have been a list of the names of the Williamsburg galleries that have come and gone during the years that Richie operated this gallery. That would have been a nice performance, but <laughs> I didn't want to deliver a eulogy or an obituary, but rather a hymn, a hymn to Richard Timperio and the Sideshow Nation. <clears throat> so I decided to take a view a bit more philosophical and start with Rene Descartes, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I exist. But it was Immanuel Kant who realized that to perceive anything like art, Logic forces one to look through the lenses of time and space. I'd like to take a brief glance at Rich through time and space. Most artists are selfish, idealistic narcissists. Who would be so audacious as to think they were creating stuff that the rest of the world needed to see and with little or no guarantee of monetary remuneration? We can't even define art. It's too broad a concept to be limited to a few words. But a major notion that I believe in is that art helps soften the harsh realities of nature to momentarily reduce the suffering of existence, to cushion us against the hard rocks of the cosmos. In essence, the artists and those who arrange areas of reception provide humankind with a space for therapy, a loving therapy against the inevitability of eternity. But if no one sees the work of art, it vanishes as if it never existed. By providing an arena where art can be exposed, Rich allowed it to enter the public consciousness in a way to allow it to be perceived to exist and to acknowledge the existence of its authors and provides its audience with a brief respite from life's grind. Art is a social practice. It functions with a structure of people, these people forming groups and joining the larger culture. As we've seen tonight, some artists use words, some stainless steel, some video. Although an accomplished painter, for his most profound work of art, rich employed people. And it was this gallery and the creative community around it that he created what Joseph Boyce has termed a social sculpture. Mm -hmm. When the mode of music changes, the walls of the city tremble. That's a paraphrase from Plato. Williamsburg and Rich changed music. 
and the walls trembled for a moment. For history to notice, there has to be a break, a fracture, a disruption from what has come before. And for this break to be taken seriously, those creating the breach must be aware of themselves and their attempted autonomy. To further, this, to further this autonomy, they must build their own history, their own culture, their own nation. But culture is a battlefield. Various factions are constantly struggling for dominance, deciding who and what deserves to be considered. These forces build enduring spheres of ideology controlling society to reproduce themselves, not always for the benefit of the deserving. Challenging these powers can be dying, if not dangerous. When Rich opened Sideshow, there were only a half dozen or so venues, because they weren't really galleries, most of them, showing art in Williamsburg. I've documented from the mid-1980s until today that there have been over 140 gal galleries hmm. in the burg, outnumbering anything in the East Village. At one point, just around the corner on Grand Street, there were six or seven galleries. Parker's Box, Bellwether, 51 Grand, and Magnifique, just to mention a few. Rich and Sideshow outlived them all. Every New York artist knows what it's like to try to walk into a gallery and start a relationship. First, after ignoring you for 20 minutes, the receptionist might look up <laughs> and see if there are dollar signs emanating from your forehead. <laughs> or if you have the smell of cash. <laughs> For them, art is strictly business. Although Rich did sell art, and he sold a couple of pieces for me out of the many shows, there was always a sense of the authentic, non-commercial, and marginalized, however unfashionable. Play was always an essential part of Richie's aesthetic. <clears throat> <laughs> the ultimate manifestation of this was his yearly Sideshow Nation extravaganzas. Yeah. These events were month-long performance pieces employing dozens of helpers and requiring masterful orchestration skills. <laughs> I've covered these pieces extensively elsewhere. Suffice to say that in the last version, there was something like 580 artists presenting the work. Yeah. This monster show and the crowds that attracted were always a chance to make good-hearted mischief. And more than once, I, went, I witnessed Rich in cowboy hat and bolo tie conjoling local cops like a diplomat to avoid being shut down. Artists some from way out of state, were all thrilled to have the Sideshow Nation exhibition on their resumes. It's said that an artist's significance can be measured by how their production has fulfilled the needs and desires and reflected those needs presented during a specific time, a special time for our community. I call these special times, why? because this is our time. This is the only time we have. Rich Team Perio and Sideshow Gallery are like a pair of parentheses around the Williamsburg art scene. If you were even a small part of this vanished scene, then you were part of Rich's Sideshow Nation. <laughs> this is a quote from Walt Whitman's, I thought would be fitting to end this with. Crossing Brooklyn Ferry. You have waited. You always wait. 
you dumb, beautiful ministers. We receive you with three cents at last and are insatiate henceforward. Not you anymore should be able to foil us or withhold yourselves from us. We use you and do not cast you aside. We plant you permanently within us. We fathom you not. We love you. There is perfection in you also. You furnish your parts towards eternity, great or small. You furnish your parts towards the soul. Richard T. Imperio, our sideshow nation, salutes you. Thank you. Yeah.